On that note, I'm very happy to get things going. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we all know that kids' business in India has seen an encouraging, impactful, impressive rise in terms of content creation, innovation, and engagement, of course. From animation to fiction, non-fiction, to educational apps which make kids' learning all the way more entertaining, kids as a genre is here to stay and grow in leaps and bounds. IWMBuzz.com's India Kids Summit over the years has emerged as a marquee property bringing together the best from the kids' content, business, and advertising space. In its fifth year, the summit brings together the custodians, creators, marketers, influencers, all together under one roof to discuss current and future trends of kids' entertainment content business in India. I'm sure nobody could have done it better than IWMBuzz.com. Please give it up for IWMBuzz.com, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, of course, the initiative matters, but uh, something that even matters all the way more is the support of the partners. And of course, without the support of our partners, this wouldn't have been possible. So I'd like to take a moment to, you know, kind of thank our partners. This is powered by Green Gold Animation and Gubbare TV, associate partner Neela Film Productions, partners Puntoon Kids, Pro Ace, and of course, like I said in the very beginning, an initiative by IWM Buzz Live. Once again, give it up for you all, and once again, give it up for India Kids Summit Season 5, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, for more details, of course, you have the indiakidsummit.com website, which is www.indiakidsummit.com. You also have the iwmbuzz.com website, which is www.iwmbuzz.com. You can also tweet. Of course, this is a world of social media. Everybody likes to use social media to tweet and create engagement. So the official hashtag for the day is India Kids Summit. I'll repeat the official hashtag for today. It's India Kids Summit. All right, a lot has been said. Now it's time to move ahead with the first panel discussion for the day. Very important topic, something that we all want to hear. The topic for the moment is importance of IPs and kids' entertainment. I'll first introduce our honorable moderator, and then I'll introduce our speakers for the moment. So this session is going to be moderated by Tarandeep Singh Sekhon, who's the chief business officer, Bouncing India. And he's going to be joined by, give it up for him, please. Yes, I love it. I thought that people will be cheering, you know, all together, but then if you can clap for everybody individually, nothing like it. Thank you. Give it up for sir. Thank you. So he'll be joined on stage by Sanat Kumar Mishra, who's the Executive Vice President and National Marketing Head of Radio City India. Give it up for Sanat, sir, please. You know, when you have such an encouraging, you know, crowd, the job of an MC gets a little easier. Thank you so much. We have Ridhima Bhaseen, who's the Head International Business IP and Brand Licensing, Licensing from Neela Film Productions Private Limited. Give it up for her, please, ladies and gentlemen. We also have Dr. Rajiv Rastogi, who is the VFX Head, VFX Producer of Excel Entertainment Private Limited. I would next like to invite Satya Das, who is the Chief Alliance Officer from Laksha Media Group and is a startup investor. Give it up for him, please, ladies and gentlemen. And now we have the one and only Tabassum Modi, who is the founder of Victor Tango Entertainment Private Limited. Give it up for them, please. A lot louder for all of them together over here. Let's make some noise. Come on. Request you all to take your seats. And this is Kids Summit, so I believe the excitement can be equivalent to how it is for kids. Thank you so much. I leave it on to you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for pouring in some energy. We needed it after the strong round of coffee yet. Thank you, everyone, for coming in. Uh, and congratulations again to IWM Bears. It's the fifth year of India Kids Summit. And uh, without wasting much time, let's get on to the topic. So we have uh, importance of IPs in kids' entertainment, and I'm thrilled to have an esteemed panelist here. So they bring a wide, vary, and range of experience. So we have somebody who's in media, that's uh, Sanatya. We have people who've been thronging publication houses. They're there in OTT, they're there in the television space, they're there in the publication space. And of course, we have people who've specialized in on-ground IPs, and also how they present specific brand solutions and engage brands with kids' entertainment. Uh, so let's uh, take it forward. My first question, I would like to open it to all. You can take it one by one, is uh, without dwelling into importance of kids' IPs. Okay, of course, we have India Kids Summit itself in its fifth year. So we all know uh, IPs and kids have been the mainstream since the last decade or so. I want to understand from each one of you how the IP structure in kids' entertainment has evolved over the last three, four years, especially after COVID. 
are there any specific trends with respect to your own businesses which have you know shoved in is there a different lens probably you know which marketers are wearing when they look at kids entertainment and the importance of ips so let's uh, start with sanath thank you tarun thank you uh, before starting this uh, i want to throw some numbers so india population is all of us aware is 140 crore and urban is 35% which is roughly 50 crore but the good number is that like according to the the census i know it is 2011 but projected data uh, uh, by cantar it says that like 30 30.2% of the people the person they belongs to in the age group of 8 to 17 those are considered as a kid now 30.2 that means roughly 43 crore 50 crore urban population and 43 crore this is a huge number whenever i interact with the advertisers or the brand manager the problem is that how to reach out to consumer now consumer can be anyone now now the engagement is the one factor like most, most of the brand they have started looking at so if you look at the advertising any 10 advertising out of that seven advertising either directly or indirectly kids are involved now kids why kids are involved the reason is that because they are able to influence parents third party cookies we are talking about uh, in in uh, uh, performance marketing or like a digital marketing we always talk about third party cookies see in our term we say that they are the third party influencer nowadays if you are going to buy anything whether you are going to buy a flat car or the clothes directly or indirectly they are the influencers so that's why that's why i mean most of the brand they are targeting kids if they want to grow their business now for us uh, uh, we started uh, uh, almost like 5 years 7 years back there was a radio city super singer and and when i was interacting with one of the brand and he asked me sanat what kind of response you are looking i said like you see this is the first time i am not looking more than thousand or uh, 1500 registration but roughly guess like if it was done in 39 cities any guess any number how many response we got any guess from kids number i said like 50 crore is a population remember urban any guess registration kids no right and wrong answer Four point six five lakh registration, and then later on, uh, I can take the brand name. Jee Sare Gama Pa. They approach us. They want to associate. So that is the power of the kids. So right now, right now, what is happening? If and that's why, like most of the brand, they associated with us, and and later on, like the the there are the sub property which we created around kids because we realize there is a power. So Bharat ki Amar kahani, all those things, and why the kids contents are growing because the ham uh, sab ne story suna hua hai, correct? And the stories are in different languages. So these stories are narrated in such a way. on 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 digital as well as on terrestrial so these stories are the influencer to take a decision okay that's why that's why uh, our people they are most of the brand and advertiser they are approaching kids as a ip and because these are the ip they are going to give us the roi thank you thank you sanat i absolutely agree so out of my experience 15 years you know in kids space uh, people used to brands used to first consider kids as purely pester power you know zabardasti kharido which has evolved it's a myth so we call it the knowledge power so of course brands are approaching everybody is looking at kids to bring in the knowledge and then eventually you know get a transaction or get brand affinity so coming to ridima again the question about uh, you know you've been very successful with tomc then getting into animation you ventured into gaming multiple online plat- platforms so how has the journey been and especially over the last 3 4 years you know have you pivoted has there be a you know absolute change or are there any secret juices you know that you've made this property and ventured out into multiple avenues thanks arundeep so um, i think for us our journey with this particular ip tarak mehta ka ulta chashma um began about 16 years ago so um that is when rcg kind of uh, managed to retain the ip which is a very rare thing for a studio to do 
as many of you are aware in the broadcast space, it's usually the broadcaster that owns the IP. And yeah, I think that it's all his hard work that today it is the number one uh, entertainment brand in the country. And it truly cuts across um, not only cultures, I would say it's a cultural phenomenon, and also across um, age groups. So I think that um, it was a very um, obvious pivot for us to get into the kids space having uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, we've built a community of loyal uh, fans, including the very young ones. So we started off when we um, licensed our uh, characters to Sony Ye with this show called Tarak Mehta Ka Chota Chashma, which was an animation uh, IP. So we actually did this um, about, uh, like right after COVID, in fact. And uh, yeah, we saw um, great success. It was very well received. We went on to do four seasons or more of that IP. And uh, it also got picked up by uh, Netflix. Then we realized that um, kids especially, you know, and of course all of us, and this trend began, I believe, during and uh, post pandemic, we saw that, uh, you know, people are increasingly wanting uh, on demand uh, content. So we thought it was a very obvious choice for us to really extend that IP and uh, get into the toddler space. So we created Tarak Mehta Ka Ulta Chashma Rhymes. And um, we have these rhymes now in um, over nine regional languages as well, you know, apart from just Hindi and English, because we truly recognize that uh, India is a country where, uh, you know, half the population speaks uh, languages other than Hindi. So now we've even launched our Tamil and Malayalam uh, version of the rhymes. And it's just been quite a journey for us because in a very short span of time, we grew to over 10 million subscribers on the YouTube platform. And we get about uh, 20 million uh, views daily, which is uh, all organic. So it's uh, quite a success. We have a really good team in-house that's been working on this particular IP. And uh, we also have a gaming team in-house um, now. And we've launched about uh, eight to 10 games with um, different characters. And the more popular ones being Run Jetha Run on Android and iOS and uh, Popat Lal Shortcut Race, Hungry Goli, multiple games, and we have more coming very, very soon. So <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been great, even though the, the games uh, went on to be the top five um, very quickly on Android and iOS, and uh, we're um, continuing to move forward in that direction and really um, build more um, IPs in the kids space with the Tarak Mehta brand. <laughs> Superb. I think uh, TMKOC is uh, one of the landmark case studies. Even what we realized, it started as a primarily uh, family comedy show. Yeah. Of course, then it had the spark, you know, with kids entertainment. Then you had the animation, the games. And now with the rhymes, I think you're trying to, you know, engage the entire journey of the customer, right? From them being toddlers until the love which you get for senior citizens. Thank you. It's been remarkable. Coming to, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Rajiv, uh, you again had this famous uh, IP, which is Fukre. Okay, but again, although kids love it, it was more of pre-teens, young adults. So what was the thought, you know, what was the boardroom discussion when you took that uh, decision, took that jump that, you know, we can explore, do an animated version and get it, you know, more kid-friendly uh, so if you can share your experience and part two of my question is which of your next you know big franchise are you considering is it possible for you to share can we I don't know see an Archie's coming into animation <laughs> or if you can throw in some surprises for us sure uh, so as far as Fokre was concerned I think the thought was that uh, uh, still being the most successful franchisee for Excel which has just part three got released the first thought was that uh, commercially, it got registered amongst the audience, and uh, it was the first of its kind where Excel explored 
that it's a comedy genre where people are loving it and people have been related with the characters and that's the reason why this thought came that let's venture into a gaming zone where the target audience was quite different and at the same time uh, the exploration was also towards that that whether this franchise can extend targeting a different set of audience uh, having said so i don't think so that it worked out really well the way it was planned uh, in a pipeline i don't think so that we have anything related to the uh, kids or we want to jump into any kind of an ip game uh, as far as the movies are concerned uh, we are gearing up uh, with dawn 3 we are gearing up with uh, one of the biggest mythology being planned uh, internally with a uh, rakesh om prakash mehra as a director and it's a hindu mythology subject uh we're gearing up with another netflix series so there are a bunch of projects that are happening on the live production side but uh i have a different thought that uh, uh your first question when it was coming to that from a different landscape i still see that uh, there is a huge market for the kids which is still untapped because uh, the main stream audience which are there on the ott which people are connecting to the content where they are exploring different different types of genres i still feel that there is a gap in the content of from the kids perspective like uh you have the you have the content which is targeting youth you have the tar- uh, content which is targeting the older age but not many content i am seeing which is targeting the kid genre so i think that it's a huge market still untapped and where the bigger players are still should explore this and they should get into this because as you said that from last 3 years 4 years we've been seeing that is developing and it's growing and uh, as far as the numbers were concerned i think i was surprised to hear these numbers also yeah thank you thank you i uh, absolutely agree so i have a godson who is now turning 7 and last 4 years you know thanks to covid i was you know frequently with him and the kind of content which these kids are exploring so at times even i wonder you know there is a lot of international content which of course is there yeah. which they love and there is also a lot of national content you know which is growing but exactly, there is a yeah. lot of space across the kids bracket which we call it from 2 to 14 right so they have multiple fragments within it where you know you guys can definitely step in so taking this forward satya you have your expertise in kids ips other ips and especially in live platforms so how do you Uh, perceive you know how the kids ip structure has evolved especially for live events so we saw there were ips which were probably at their peak in general ips were at their peak you know till covid covid struck everybody went on to screen 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 then we were all uh, you know talking about the hybrid model probably it's back to you know the physical model so if you can share uh, your experience and how consumers have they evolved have the preferences evolved okay before i start i just want to know uh, good morning everybody how many of your brand guys here can show fans brand brand representing any brand anybody who content creating content i mean i just want to know the audience that's uh, content okay yeah correct uh see uh, i i mean uh, this is this is a very challenging category extremely challenging category and uh, because they don't have disposable income but uh, and people who plan for brands are also very challenging they don't understand this category as well so it's a, it's a challenge in both ends but if you look at global trends global money is it's massive some of the biggest players in the world have invested some of the biggest money in this category the kids category so the believe is already there and uh, multiple platform whether linear or digital are coming up are investing money on this so uh, i mean coming to your question what we did was we had multiple array of uh, ips uh, that we did and uh, there was i think two to three ips on the kids category uh my take is i mean during uh, the lockdown i mean we all went into watching television or content on different platforms and those days what happened the stickiness of uh, kids category really grew and from a typical 3 to 4 hours consumption uh, for kids 
category, it went up to around seven, eight hours, which was really, really, because you had nothing to do. And uh, that was the time I think a lot of people missed it out because they could have created brands and then leveraged to an, uh, you know, not me, I'm saying people, I mean, uh, big broadcasters, they could have uh, created brands during those two, three years and then they could have taken it on ground. As I was not a broadcaster, I did, I think, uh, we, we tied up with India Kids Fashion Week for a long period of time, and then we did multiple cities, and it was a successful model for me. And experimental model was the Windmill Festival. I think that was a amazing stuff, which I did, did in Geo Gardens, and we had a lot of sponsors coming on board, and uh, it was also a successful one. But, <clears throat> you know, I'll tell you, typically, you all should know that what, what happens in IP. You know, you know, to understand whether it's a music IP or whatever kind of IP is, there is a, there is a major issue in India. First is ticketing. People don't pay money to come to see an IP. If I, I can get the best of, uh, you know, recently Lola happened, expensive, but they lost money. First thing first, they don't pay money to come to see any shows. Secondly, uh, you know, brands will give you that much. They will not take that much risk. Third is, the venue itself is so expensive. So all put together, the guy who's creating the IP is, is really scared to put money in again and again. And again. I mean, only guys with deep pocket can do it. So my, uh, you know, my take home at this place would be, you should speak to all stakeholders. Create an ecosystem which is profitable. Otherwise, nothing will work in IPs, you know. I mean, currently, if you see, I think there are only two, th two to three companies who are profitable in this entire ecosystem. So uh, it's, it's a deterrent, whether it's the guy who's performing or the venue or that. I mean, every, the whole ecosystem, you have to sit down, change, then only you'll get profitability. That's my take home. But I will keep on investing on this category because I have strong belief that this is a ecosystem which, you know, you call this um, OGs of the world, my gods of the, the new age kids. They will grow up. You can build strong brands there and they're the next future. So, you know, going forward to reach out to them, there's fantastic. I mean, people who can think long term will stay with them. Thank you. Thank you, Satya. Uh, taking forward uh, with you, Tabasam, you know, just uh, on what uh, Satya highlighted about, you know, getting the revenue bit right. So you have a lot of IPs of your own and you provide a lot of brand solutions you know, various brands who come, we were having a chat outside in the room. So what I would want to understand uh, over the last three, four years, you know, what is the brand's expectation when they reach out to you and when you reach out to them in terms of going about and planning an IP in kids space? So brand expectation as such hasn't changed from a pre-pandemic to a post-pandemic point of view. Um, it's pretty much the same. They want to reach out to a large number of audience, and that's largely why they go out to kids. What has changed from a trends point of view, let's say in the last decade or so, is the kind of brands that want to get into the kids space. So we specialize in doing school contact programs, and we take brands inside schools. Initially, maybe about the first 10 years of my career, it was largely only brands targeting kids. So stationary brands, FMCG brands, and uh, brands which had kids and serv uh, services and products for kids. In the last 10 years, automobiles want to go in, F, uh, BFSI wants to go in, uh, categories which actually have nothing to do with kids want to go in and reach out to kids because obviously, uh, like he rightly said, they have great uh, influence over family decisions. Uh, we've had actually even uh, builders who want to go into kids, uh, higher education companies who want to target uh, school students. So that has been maybe a kind of a shift in terms of who wants to reach out to kids. Today, I don't think there's any category which does not understand the power and influence that a kid has over a family decision. And hence, the audience is not just kids' brands. So that's one of the shifts that has happened. Uh, you spoke about the hybrid model. It did not work at all. Like all the IPs, all the brands that we were servicing right up to the pandemic had a great run. They were doing 10 seasons, 15 seasons of their property and doing really well. The minute uh, COVID hit, everybody said, okay, now we can't stop, so let's do it hybrid. It did not work for any brand across the board. I don't know one brand where it worked. 
the main thing with kids is actually physically reaching out to them and having that one-on-one -on -one interaction, which we were not able to do uh, because of the pandemic. After a point of time, you know, kids got over the excitement of being on screen, unlimited screen time, engagement on screen. They just did not want it anymore. So even today, when brands come up to us and say, let's create a digital event, I said, it won't work. Kids will not do digital events. So it's very, very limited. The numbers are incomparable. Like you spoke about 4 lakh or so entries that you got. That kind of number in a school contact program, I can give a brand in one city. I don't need to go to 39 cities. One city and maybe, what, 40, 50 schools, I can deliver that kind of number. So the numbers are large, like you said. Very easy to reach out to these numbers when you have a physical connect with them. But the minute you go digital, these numbers drop down. And brands who are engaging with kids I want those large numbers. So that's why they do uh, school contact programs or kids' events. So um, digital just did not work for kids, uh, in my opinion, at least. I have not been able to uh, you know, service any brand with a good hybrid project. You have, so I'll, I'll just quickly, yes, please, uh, please. I'll just quickly uh, you know, in terms of brands, she's so bang on, right? So I did uh, a branded content IP called uh, Scored a Single Wicket. One of the most successful, uh, you know, content for uh, Skoda, it was done in, I think, some uh, 28 cities across. So we took all the kids, school kids, to play cricket, and the MD from Skoda came, and then it was, you know, it culminated in, a, in Delhi in a big show. So, see, automobiles, BF, BFSI. I mean, with BFSI, we did another branded content. I think that's one thing which is working because people have understood that, you know, the brands have understood that it's not only the kids' brand, as she was saying. Earlier, it was only you go to a kids' brand and then try to, but now, across board, all brands are coming to, to support, yeah. Absolutely. Can we uh, have a show of hands uh, with respect to who are students here? Any students who are just learning? No. From the agencies? Servicing, business development, sales. So what I just wanted to quickly peek into, okay, quickly peek into, you know, what kind of audience is there so that we can just do a downplay and uh, pose those kind of questions. So I'll take this opportunity to deep, deep dive and understand on the revenue model. So, okay, I'm, I just want to understand, you spoke about, you know, uh, getting the first Excel right so that eventually you see you know, there is a profit which comes in. So again, we'll go step by step. We can start with the live IPs. So what are the different uh, revenue sources? Of course, we know the basics. Probably it's ticketing and sponsorship. But That's if pretty you can... much, yes. Revenue sources remain the same. In the kids space, a trend that I have noticed uh, over the last few years is if you offer a value-added service to kids, parents are willing to pay for it. Unlike a pure entertainment service. So if you say, okay, go and watch a show, or someone singing, they might be re reluctant or look for free passes or not willing to pay as much. But in the kids space, because of the way the education system has changed, parents want to build a portfolio for their children. Or children also want to have a lot of credentials added to their portfolio because it helps in higher education, it helps in admissions. So if you offer a value added service, like one of the IPs that we do is like a spell bee competition. So if it is a national level competition like that, or if it is a good workshop, or it's an award ceremony, it's, a, it's something that you can add to your profile, and it stays with you over a long period of time, is beneficial to you, people are willing to pay. So that is probably a trend that uh, we've noticed in the last few years, is the willingness to pay to participate in competitions like this or IPs like this has probably become better than it used to be in the past. In the past, for kids' IPs at least, we were totally dependent on sponsorship. There was no second revenue stream for us. It was just sponsorship. So a brand would come, they would either create their own IP or sponsor an existing IP, and that would be it. Today, we are able to see uh, more money being spent towards kids. And even, even in uh, India Kids Fashion Week, I've seen parents willing to pay to have their child up there. So there is willingness in this category, in my opinion. Satya, if you could also dwell, I know it's, it's, it's not a plain, simple question and there is no, you know, secret sauce to it. But given, given a choice, you know, if somebody wants to look at doing a live IP, what could be the structured model, you know, so where at least so much you should look at ticketing, 
or so much on sponsorship or look at so much even before you go live you can just share some tips you know from your learnings see i think uh, i think your, your your basics have to be very clear what you want to do in a 10 year game plan when i say 10 years game plan you have to go and tell the brand that this is what i want to do for you for next 10 years and you grow with me what you are doing currently is is creating idea and going to a brand and saying sponsor aap mujhe 2 crore do ye show main aisa 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 kar lunga then he thinks yaar 2 crore mein to digitally i will reach to so many numbers main channel mein dalunga to this is the reach news channel mein dalunga to you know you know i'll get hazar rupaye mein spot so then what happens is your cost per contact gets very high and then you don't get that kind of monies so if you can from day one see engagement with the brand with the influencers with what oh i mean you have to be absolute reach like you can then build build i mean continuously build that brand with the show so when it comes to year 10 i mean people will see that this is this show this product show for instance let me tell you scored a single wicket i think this is second year that we're doing it and we're growing day by day so it's like a time will come it will be like scored a single wicket it's a brand association with that product so 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 that is the formula there that you have to that you have to you know that that's a, that's a very successful for, formula which working for me otherwise it's pure stress aapne you do a show you know that the <laughs> the the amount is this then you start running around you know a ticket nahi bik raha ye nahi bik raha the other one is i see a lot of companies like zomato uh insider the ping mgs if they see value that that value have to go and tell them bhai mere paas x number of influencers hai they will also give a shout out the whole packaging has to be so uh, you know the, the so two things one is great packaging how you can take the brand to the next level and uh, telling the brand that you you trust me come with me i will create a great brand story out of this whole exercise that we are trying to do but small then then or you do a small show where aapka 5 lakh kharcha ho raha you can get it from lic to lic what and then <laughs> we are not in that game right i mean my so there are two kinds of things which is happening that is where a lot of unsuccessful companies are coming who wants to do it passion hai karne ko but passion se paisa nahi aata look at brands like kochila look at brands like tomorrow and i mean they have consistently ticketing money they don't they will say no to brands may very few brands come look at a formula 1 i mean where have they reached man so think like that think on those lines or you have money is like the ambani's who can spend money keep on spending money on isl you know absolutely don't be myopic i think that's a very good insight just taking this uh, forward with you sanat so i'm sure you also do the modeling you know you have the super successful uh, uh, super singer junior edition okay you've just uh, ventured into television now congratulations on the channel so have you planned anything specific to kids and again coming back to the first question is so how do you go about so of course when you plan an ip you have the monetization plan in process you have a team which goes approaches the brands so how do you go about you know creating the revenue plan for your ips uh yeah uh, uh first thank you so much like recently we have launched our uh, television channel rc studio that is there on uh, geo platform now we do lots of research because we believe in research the reason is that if you are getting into any kind of ip before that like why you want to get into that uh, of course like revenue is one angle so we when we created the rc studio also there was a one segment which was very coming out now as i said like if 30.2% of the Uh, uh people they belong to age group of kids which is 43 how to, should i reach out to them so we wanted to understand like, what kind of content is going to work for them the content not only on terrestrial but on the television and the digital front also the insight which came to us so they want to they on the local content like so how should i reach out to them that's why we created a segment called bharat ki amar kahaniyan now bharat ki amar kahaniyan fits with shivaji maharana pratap and the south down south also and that's the segment like that has started picking up recently like we were looking at the number this was a even if even if we are targeting kids the consumptions are happening through the parents 
So this kind of like insight has helped us to create the IP. Now coming back to your second point, ROI. Yes, all of us are trained by ROI. Now my, my experience is that like when you are interacting with the media planner and buyer, nothing against to media planner and buyer, of course like you are interacting with the finance guy, correct? Their job is to negotiate. But the moment you are interacting with the, the, the brand manager or the decision maker who understand the brand, the ball game is completely different. Now, uh, as Sir said, uh, uh, ticketing, for us, ticketing, it has not helped. Because most of the people, like, they look for the free kind of thing. But what, we, and ticketing is a completely different ball game. When we started Junior Super Singer, the thought came to us also, okay, we'll start, we'll ask them a minimal kind of thing. And we tried in Ahmedabad, and trust me, uh, we recover the cost, the total investment. Later on, if it was free, we got it from amplification and sponsorship, we recovered the cost also and there was a profit. So, and that was done in Delhi. So you can say that Ahmedabad and Delhi is a different market, yes, we are exploring, but Ahmedabad kind of market, they are willing, I mean, I mean uh, we realize that they, they have a money, they will pay for it, but it was not successful. So outcome for us is that like, if you want to do anything, sponsorship and amplification is going to help us as far as revenue is concerned. Thank you so much. Uh, my next question will be to Riddhima and Dr. Rajiv. Now, you create content, you know, so I'm just thinking loud, if I'm the brand advertiser, you know, a lot of brands, of course, approach you for in-film brand integrations. So if you could just uh, dwell on that, you know, share some ideas, and especially if there has been a challenge, so I'm sure some brands are gungo about, okay, this is what I want. And sometimes, you know, you may have your perspective beat, one, on the storyline. Second, there is this most important aspect of ethics with respect to kids' marketing. So I'm sure some cases there would have been those filters where you would have to, you know, probably say a no or retweak it. So if you can share, share some experiences where you've done brand integrations and probably even had to say a no to a few of them. So, um with us, uh, we're very uh, selective because we don't want to clutter, you know, really our uh, content space. So we're working with uh, some of the mainstream legacy brands that we've associated with um, in the past. Um, I'll give you a few examples. We had a very successful um, integration with uh, Maruti for um, their brand uh, True Value which uh, we kind of created a story for um, Maruti with our uh, characters on Tarak Mehta Ka Ulta Chashma. And uh, it was uh, very seamlessly woven into the story. So that saw a huge success, not only on air, but in fact, uh, because, I mean, we're known to make hilarious content and the content was so great that, you know, we had, um, three or four of those uh, videos trending organically on the YouTube top five as well. And um, then we, we also did something with Havels and Lloyd, which I think is um, a case study, if any of you guys have noticed. So our character, Jethalal, has um, this store called Gada Electronics on the show. So we just got the Havels and Lloyd electronic products as part of the store environment. And uh, we also um, very um, tactfully kind of um, created storylines to um, really um, tell people about the product without compromising on, uh, you know, the content. Because I feel that's really important because the audience is very smart um, these days. They'll know right away that it's a plug-in and they'll just tune off from the story altogether. And uh, we're doing something with Sprite as well, which has just uh, gone on air. Um, with uh, the kids' content, of course, I feel like um, in-show isn't something, I mean, a lot of uh, broadcasters have tried to do it. It's not something that works for uh, animation at all. It looks really <laughs> bad. But um, what uh, we're offering, I mean, because we work so uh, closely with a few of these brands, um, we feel like brands also want to kind of, they're looking for um, a way to really engage with, um, you know, the audiences um, without um, kind of um, being very in, in your face, you know. 
So um, we have some solutions that we're working with uh, for them. Like um, we have this game, which is the Gara Electronics Environment. So there is an opportunity kind to kind of um, brand or uh, you know to include brands in as part of the games and really have uh, while uh, you know users are playing the games engage with the brands as well. And um, say uh, we also work with a lot of tourism boards. So um, on another game, the environment could possibly be one of the countries that we might uh, showcase. So those are the associations that uh, we're working with. And of course, as for our um, animation content, it's all um, advertiser-based uh, um, in uh, with the platform getting the, the advertisers on board. So <laughs> that's Thank how you. we work. Very interesting. Uh, I think this would be the last question. So, Dr. Rajiv, part one is the same. So, you know, any integrations or has there been some, you know, interesting boardroom discussions where you had to put a foot down to a brand or a particular integration? And part two of the question is, again, out of my own curiosity, you are into VFX. So, how has AI, you know, right now, how it is altering uh, the VFX landscape, you know, how you are using AI to take it forward? So the first part of the question, yes, uh, we've been seeing a lot of brand integrations when it comes to the live production. And it's easy over there because one, that it is a revenue model for the in-film branding. And from a person that your, uh, your, your minimum security of the amount is always there. Uh, definitely there have been cases where uh, we have said no to all, uh, to the brands also, uh, purely from the aesthetic point of view that the film doesn't need such brands. Uh, in my early uh, career days, uh, I was doing a film with Balaji. And uh, apparently, uh, I don't know what the uh, back-end deal or the mainstream revenues were, but uh, in a clip uh, of about 30 seconds, there were like bright advertisers who wanted to do their in-film branding over there. And nothing was shot in that scene uh, with bright advertising. And we have to do like with VFX, we have to put the holdings, we have to put the LED displays, we have to do everything like behind the characters, it's all bright. So that is a kind of integration that we did in just a 30 seconds clip. And every time it's like in, in an eye, the character have to uh, be lost and the bright has to be in focus. So that was a kind of an integration that we also did. Uh, coming to the part two of the question that, uh, uh, as far as the AI is concerned, how are we pushing the boundaries? Right now, I think it's still uh, uh, on an exploration stage. While we are doing it, integrating it with the VFX for the pre-production, a lot of previs are happening, anim anim animatronics ha uh, are happening, uh, your concepts are happening, storyboards are happening. So initially, what used to happen was when the script is there, the traditional route of uh, uh, bringing it on paper was the storyboard, but right now it's all AI-driven frames. So exactly what you're thinking, you can just put a code to it and you can bring the exact visuals out of it. So it brings a closer reference from the directors, what he is visioning, how he is trying to get into it, and what are we supposed to do it. So it helps uh, majorly in planning uh, the entire production and also to give you a kind of realistic cost before the shoot itself. So AI is definitely helping us there. Superb. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I think it was a very insightful session. If there are any questions, I'd request you to please stand up, introduce yourself, and you can put across your question to your chosen speaker. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rishi Nayak, and I'm representing Infogen Labs. Uh, we are uh, already doing a lot of kids' content we are creating, and we have worked with you know brands like Mondo TV, uh, which is from Spain. Like uh, we have created content from them. That's uh, Grisu, if uh, you can search around. So um, our expertise is in uh, you know we are uh, developing kids' games, and uh, recently we have created a product that's uh, a Grace. So we are targeting kids. We uh, want to you know uh, help the kids not only to gamify the entire. Uh, learn uh, like uh, you know not just for the entertainment part but also they can learn something like uh, uh, so right now we have created almost like 30 games and we are on a uh, verge of creating more games uh, to uh, uh, 
um, make it entertaining as well as they can learn at the same time. So my question is uh, to Tabassum and Satya both that um, like uh, what should be the approach that we have not yet uh, reached out to the market with this content. And of course, like uh, 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 Tabassum coming from like her uh, experience from you know connecting with a lot of schools. So just want to get in, get a strategy how we can help uh, our <coughs> This, uh, uh, this I, I can say this initiative to the students. We can take it uh, to the students, and what should be the strategy? Uh, so, if you can, yeah. Free uh, my strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I charge for these things, you know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if it is uh, learning-based content or edutainment content in any way, schools are very open to introduce their kids to these things. And see, your biggest cost is going to be your marketing cost. How are you actually going to get your people to know? what you've created, and I'm sure what you've created is fantastic, but there's so much good stuff out there. How do you differentiate what you have? How do you take it out to your audience? And that's the biggest challenge. So schools are very open. If you have something good to offer them, like I said, if you have any value added services, which either helps them, helps the student or the parent or the school, solves a problem for them. Uh, it could be academic or non-academic, but schools are finding, as kids are evolving, schools are finding challenges in how to teach or how to communicate and if a problem is being solved, schools will be very, very open to uh, taking on a product like this and introducing it to their kids. So you should explore that route. Yeah. So uh, are you the founder? Uh, no, I'm uh, working as okay. a sales head. Yeah. So take, share my number with your founder. <laughs> I can, I can sure, be a director sure, sure, and a consultant sure. and make it 10x. <laughs> Jokes apart. See, you know, that, that I think you all have to... Uh, create a story out of it. The story that I see is the global, uh, globally, I think it's around 11 to $12 billion industry. And it's going to be become around 30, 32 billion coming forward. So look at the universe. That's the big universe that we are playing the game, right? Good part is when it comes to educational content, no, which you're creating, it, it's not lang language specific. I mean, you uh, can make Satya, it a multi. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry. Pardon me for this. I just forgot to uh, mention one more thing that the game uh, that we are we are creating this edutainment thing. Uh, it is it is uh, like it creates a performance evaluation of the kids that how they are learning uh, in terms of characters. You know, in terms of uh, like uh, uh, like shapes and uh, how they are learning. So it gives a analysis, detailed analysis to the. Uh, uh, schools as well as to the parents that our kid is uh, excelling in this sector, our kid is excelling in this sector. So accordingly, the, uh, the schools can, you know, plan out that this is the the batch that we can, uh, we have to focus on this uh, uh, alphabets or, you know, relevant topics. So that's the, uh, uh, like, uh, the the last outcome that uh, the reports and everything that is great being Great elevator pitch yeah. to Thank me. You. Trust Sorry me. to interrupt you in, bet <laughs> in between. Anyway, so, a yeah, good one. So we should meet after, just share your number. So my point is, see, today it's, it's, it's not language agnostic. I mean, again, you can create a content on the educational platform and make it in, I mean, put it in Czech Republic. You can put it in, you know, wherever you want to put it, right? Monetization, if you think in the right way, you can actually monetize it. Whoever has got, I mean, not done it has done wrong. And I, you know, I don't think we have time. I'd like to conclude with one thing. See, when you play in a playground, you have to look at the universe. This universe is very big. No wonder guys like Netflix or, you know, all the international players have spent so much of money in this ecosystem. So have your belief and faith in this ecosystem and think how to play the game. You know, just think rather than doing plain vanilla, like I said, agnostic, create content in multiple languages, the one you're creating. There's a success story there. Local brands, everybody will come on board. Everybody, as you said, builders, education clients, all, go to them, they'll come on board. And from day one, start going. Yeah, I'll just like to add, it's, it's a long game to play. Yeah. And it really needs a lot of patience and people with patient capital. And there will be success at the end of it if you have a long-term horizon to it. It's definitely not something that will convert in a year or two. So just hang in there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you thank so much. You, thank, thank you, you so much. much. We've exceeded our time, but we'll have one quick question thank because you. the gentleman... Thank you very much for the great insight. I am Jay Suda, and I, we just started a media company called Swaya Media. It's by my son, who's himself a tech prodigy and an influencer. Uh, 
so my, uh, what I would like to understand from this uh, panel discussion would be, uh, it comes to kid content, you have to reach out to them through some uh, influencer or some other means. So what would be the right type of uh, you know, influencer or means through which you will be able to uh, get what you want in terms of uh, you know, the success so-called? So you're asking in terms of for a brand, what would be the right Yes, there's influence. objective. Obviously, there's objective when you create a content, you go out and uh, have to achieve that objective, whatever, maybe revenue or otherwise. So you, this content is for kid. The audience are typically kids. Now to get into that zone where, you know, the kids get impressed and that values remain. So how do you pick point these influencers or some other source with which that value gets impacted? <laughs> I would say, um, in fact, even uh, I feel like IPs itself, IPs are all influencers, right? At the end of the day, that the Tarak Mehta brand is also an uh, um, influencer. And I feel a platform is um, really important um, and the way you kind of bring your message across. You know, um, like uh, we now that we're dabbling in the entertainment space as well, we have this uh, uh, IP called the TMKOC Play School um, that we've launched. So um, brands are um, what we're planning to do with brands is brands want to kind of create you know stuff like songs, like branded songs, and uh, really own the IP and um, use that as a way of you know really passing on the positive uh, messages, like you mentioned, uh, to the kids. Thank you. So those sort of um, innovations is... See, it will also depend on your content, you know, what mediums you want to use, you know, how do you either choose an influencer or choose a platform or choose my, the most... I think to start with, YouTube is a great medium yeah. for all types of content. Yeah, That's it's a free medium, through, get as on. You as a brand, actually, I wanted to understand how do you pick point uh, these... Uh, people who would actually go to these uh, kids and make that impact. So, you so we really see where, uh, where the eyeballs are, you know? Yeah. Where the eyeballs are, that's mm -hmm. where um, you got to hit, really. Thank what you. are uh, the kids watching these sure. days? Who are the influencers? And uh, you, you will be surprised how many kids really follow these gaming influencers on YouTube. They, they spend hours and hours just watching gameplays. <laughs> so. Thank you. So, uh, you know, uh, everywhere I see kids being discussed as a market, we keep seeing content for kids, content for kids, content for kids. Uh, I never see content for parents. I develop content for parents. And nobody, it's, uh, parents are looking for content to guide them. How come we don't see any properties, content, platform, except for something on, things on YouTube? That's my first question. And my second question is views on podcast, because uh, you mentioned TV, events, but I did not hear anybody on the panel talk about podcasts. So let me take this. So, you know, I've worked in uh, the kids and parents space. Of course, you know, when you plan, uh, you know, any initiative where you're targeting kids, you always have the lens of the parent. So it's always, it, you know, goes hand in hand. So I'm sure when they plan their IPs, you know, if he's thinking of putting up first of its kind petting zoo in a live IP, okay, it's not just the kids. So there are a lot of ancillary activities which are prepared, keeping in mind parents are also coming. So it's always a mix. Part two, let's come on to, uh, you know, specific properties with respect to parents. Of course, the domain is such that you will have a lot of secondary information which is there available, be it on YouTube or on specialized channels. Because these are, you know, very specific uh, uh, content pieces which that TG chooses and then they consume it. So I don't, I don't, I'm not aware personally about, you know, any ground IP being very specific to parents because parent will go hand on hand with the kids. And coming Can I on just to, add to that, uh, and uh, part two also of the question is I would like someone to quickly take in on the podcast bit, but. Uh, as a godfather, I know for a fact I go through multiple podcasts which are again there on YouTube, you know, which then give us tips and some insights about how, you know, we can get into better parenting. On to you, Tabas. 
So uh, when I started my conversation, I said about the Bharat ki Amar kahaniya. Bharat ki Amar kahaniya is nothing but the podcast. Okay, it is. So I mean, that's why I said like that's the one thing which is giving good response, not only on terrestrial as well on the digital kind of thing. And hence, it is available distributed on the different different platform. So these are the ways like you can engage with the kids because these are the storytelling. Storytelling is nothing but the podcast. It can be it can be only audio. It can be video also. Depends on the budget, the kind of budget the uh, company has. Podcast is definitely emerging as a big, uh, and audio books also as a big potential market for kids. Maybe we didn't address it in the panel here because we don't do very active work in that space. But uh, it's definitely a big emerging market, and it's, there is a lot of work happening in that space. Uh, coming to the parenting content that you were talking about, uh, like Darren rightly said, see these. There are two types of parenting content. One is more information-based, where guidance-based, where people want to know how do I bring up my child, or what is the right thing to do, what is the nutritional need for my child. And that kind of content is consumed in private. A lot of people don't really like to go out there and say, I don't know how to bring up my child. Nobody likes to say it, even though none of us have learned how to bring up children. We just you know, kind of learn to do it while we are at it. But that kind of con content is consumed mostly in private, uh, on your personal mobiles or laptops or whatever. But when you look at an event, there is no event where the kids and parents are separated from each other. Even if you look at parenting-related uh, uh, content for events, you're always there with your child. So it's not like, like, like even in a windmill festival, for example, if you see the number of stalls that are out there, all the brands which are there are actually related to parenting. It's not related to kids. Some of them might be kids' products and services, but all of those things are aiding the parenting process, really. So there are lots of, uh, I've seen, um, you know, products also, uh, like testing products for kids, or uh, nutritional needs for kids, or uh, tiffin ideas for kids. All of this actually really targeting the parents, not really the kid. The kid is not deciding what goes inside the tiffin, the mom is. So it's kind of, uh, it's quite uh, fused in a way. Aajkal parents jitna fight kar rahe na, you should make content for them not to fight with each other. <laughs> we are done. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it up for this panel. I'll request all of you to kindly wait on stage. I'll request Mr. Franklin Toscano, founder and CTO, IW Members Media Network, to kindly come up on stage and hand over the mementos. Huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for all of them. We'll do a group photo as well with all of you together. Can we please have a nice group photo with all of you together over here? Give it up for Siddharth Like as well, please, ladies and gentlemen, founder and editor in chief, IW Embers Media Network. The frame isn't complete without him.